Hi you guys, this is Carmen and uh, so as I had told you guys we or I'm going to be doing a painting of the military soldiers. So I'm going to show you my references that I have. So I have two references, actually I have more than two but these are the main ones that I'm going to be working on. So I have a female soldier and I have two soldiers and I also have the boot. Um, I had done it here and I didn't like the way it looked so I went ahead and I covered it and um, this is the painting that I had told you guys that I was going to do for our military soldiers and the proceeds of this will go to uh, I think it's going to go to the VA to help the military soldiers or something with PTSD or the fallen soldiers. That's what I want it to do when it does sell. And I'll post it when it's available in case you guys are interested in buying it. I don't know if I should put it on eBay and go on bids or just put a flat fee on it and uh, sell it from there and allow the proceeds to go to a military. Uh, I am my husband retired military a couple years ago and he did a few tour stops to Iraq, uh, I think Afghanistan and so we've um, he lost a lot of friends and so I know how war changes a lot of soldiers or, and so this was my way of giving back to our military and um, so I'm just gonna let you know what I'm using and what I did and then I'll show you the speed version of it um, I'm pretty sure you don't want to sit there watching me put the color down so what I first did is I sketched it and as you can see it's not like really detailed all I did is just okay this is where the face is this is where the nose nostrils lips eyes that's what I did same thing with the um, these two soldiers and then I'll be putting the uh, boot there I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this an angel or not yet so um, what I'm going to be using is any brush you can use a bristle brush, you can use a round brush, you can use a flat brush. Uh, just use any brushes. Usually now what I do is that I purchase them in bulk and I buy a lot of these and they're not that expensive. I think for the, sometimes you can get them for $4, sometimes you can get them for 7 I have soft, I have bristle, I just use them now. Uh, they, I'm not particular. <laughs> And uh, so, always have your razor blade in handy. So, you know, some of these are like $2 if you go to the uh, Dollar General and the razor to scrape off the paint from your palette to clean your palette. So, I have my palette to the side and um, I'll let you know what I'm going to be using. But this is great for helping you remove the paint. And I would suggest that you do that daily because the paint will get stuck on there. And um, so we're going to use any type of bristle brush. I will be using the Masterpiece Odorless Paint Thinner. I have had people tell me that they use just regular turpentine. Um, that they go to like a Home Depot or Walmart and they buy the regular turpentine. I've done that before and I didn't like it. Uh, this is odorless. It's for painting, doing your art. Um, you know, it just seems every time, and you probably hear me say this every time I make a video, every time I go to the store, it just goes up by a couple of dollars. So, uh, if you can get a 50% or 40% coupon, then that's when I would suggest that you buy it. Look for specials. If I don't need it, and I see that it's on sale, I'm, I buy it. So, buy that. And we will also be using linseed oil. So, what I do is that I purchase my linseed oil. And um, this one I bought from, I want to say Cheap Joe's. And so I bought it, and what you do is you do one part linseed oil and one part turpentine, and you mix them together to create a paint thinner. I've tried painting before with linseed oil. And so this is where I put it. I just go ahead and put it in there and I mix them. And I'll let you know what happened to me. Um, so I mix them in there, I put them in a jar, and I cover the jar uh, to try to protect it. And I use this little compartment, and I put my linseed oil in there. And this helps thin out the paint, and it also helps keep the linseed oil from 
getting hard, but it'll start happening if you don't cover your linseed oil. The mixture that you make, it'll start becoming a gel. So, and then it'll get hard. So make sure you always cover it. Same thing with the uh, turpentine because it dilutes. Um, what happened one time I just tried painting with linseed oil. I have a very sensitive nose. So I could, sm the whole house smell like linseed oil. And I spilled the linseed oil here on my um, easel. So now my house has this weird smell because it concentrated in here the linseed oil so be really careful because the oak the wood just soaked it up and now my whole house smells weird so that's what we're going to be using okay so any brush doesn't matter if it's bristle it doesn't matter if it's a soft brush uh what will happen is you'll start realizing the more you paint yes you're going to take care of your brushes but you stop being less picky as to what types of brushes uh, that you want the expensive brushes you will tend to favor certain brushes and you'll want to take care of those uh, so that's what's going to start happening to you um, also let me see of course we have our turpentine clean it plenty of napkins have plenty of napkins to always be um, cleaning your brush as you, if you're moving from one paint to another because you don't want to pick up that paint and uh, let's see if I'm working on white and then I get a little bit of black and I'm putting in here and I just turpentine and I don't clean it that well and I go back to the white that's going to turn gray and not when all I'm wanting is white. So please always, always really um, clean your brushes uh, as you're moving from one paint to another. Um, let me see what else did I want to tell you. Oh, well, let me show you what I'm doing. So um, as I tell you, this is my value five. So I have a, a, uh, a little thing, it's a value, a grayscale, and it'll tell you there what is a value 5. So a value, it could be either or, okay, a value 0 or a value 1 can be white and a value 10 can be black. So what will happen is you'll go from, here let me show you, it's best just to show you. So what will happen is you have your grayscale, and so this is your your values, and so you have this one. The value ten is white, and the value one is ten. It, it some people do it backwards. So you want to have a background that is a five. So it could be between these two colors, the grayscale. So. I always paint um, a section where my palette's going to be resting on, and they already sell. What will happen is some places already sell the gesso at a value 5. And so you can go ahead and cover your varnish, your canvas, or where you're going to place your paints. Why a value 5? Well, if I was to have this against black, my paints against black, what will happen is it's going to throw my colors off. Uh, the colors might look duller against black or they might look brighter against white. So when I start painting and adding color to my painting and this is white, what will happen is it's going to throw the color. It's going to look different as I'm mixing it here and when I'm placing it on the palette. So that's why you do the, uh, the value 5 on here so that it doesn't throw you and you tone your canvas. Toning the canvas is just applying a thin paint on the canvas and it usually consists of the colors you're going to be working on. So let's say if I was going to be working on a landscape outside, I might want to do some blues and some greens and some earth colors like burnt sienna and tone it really thin, like uh, almost like a watercolor. And I use either turpentine or linseed oil to thin it out and just do a great big uh, wash over it meaning just grab the paint with some linseed oil big brush or a napkin and just spread it on there really thin and then you can do your painting 
or do your sketch or you can do the sketch first and then tone the canvas and that's what I did with this is I did the sketch first and then I toned the canvas and so um, that way when I'm mixing my colors on here they're on my value 5 background where my palette sits it's not going to be throwing my colors off as I'm placing it on the canvas. Here, I'll show you. Maybe you can see this. So let's see. We have my palette. And I'll just go ahead and mention the colors that we're going to be using anyway. So I have two sets, okay? And the reason I have two sets is because I'm going to be mixing some. And then I might just want to use it here by itself. So what I have here is the white and it's titanium white. I have yellow ochre. I have a permanent rose right here. And I have a cadmium red deep. Then I have cadmium red light. Then I have burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, uh, dioxazine purple, phthalo blue. Then I have some white here because sometimes you want to mix warm colors and then some cool colors. Cool meaning anything that's towards the water, colors towards the water. Warm anything towards the sun or heat. And so then again, I have made the colors here again. So I have black, I have uh, burnt, no, raw umber, I have sap green, alizarin crimson, and blue. The reason I have these is because when I mix this to give me shadows, this could be a warmer, and then this could be a cooler to give me the shadows when I mix them. So as you can see the, the way these colors look right there. Now we're going to place them against the white background and you're going to see how they're going to pop and look different. That's why we tone and then you'll see, oh, okay, that's why you tone the canvas. So let me see. So we have these colors. And I don't know if you can see, and I'm going to use it this. See how the colors look brighter against the white. You're probably like, clean your palette. I do. I try. It just gets in there. So the colors look, um, this will be a perfect example right here. So you see here we have the same colors, and you'll see. See how the same colors look. This is the uh, thalo blue, and see how the thalo blue looks here. This is the alizarin uh, crimson, and see how the alizarin crimson looks here. Sap green, sap green. So I wanted you to see that so you can see how the colors look a little bit brighter and richer here than they do here. That's why we tone. So if I was mixing my colors here against the white and my canvas is this color, when I mix it here, it's going to look like it's brighter and I'm going to dull it out. And when it gets to my canvas, it's going to be too dark when I was needing it lighter. So now uh, I'm going to also answer a question. Now, when you paint, you're going to get into a habit of setting out your colors. And even though you might not use those colors, you might still lay them out there. And that's what I do sometimes. Sometimes I don't use the color, but I laid it on there. And I've been asked, why do you use so many colors? Well, I'm used to <laughs> laying those colors out there. I don't know if I might need it one day or not. That's why. Why do I make so many colors? Because the more you paint, too, the more color you start seeing. And so you start incorporating that color on there. So, um... Some people only like to use the primary colors, it being um, yellow, blue, and red. So they like using those colors only and they like to mix their colors. Now, what happens sometimes if you see that a tube is for sale, you're like, why mix the color when this is already mixed for me and it saves me some time. You know, and that's why I like to put more color on there. Why, when I already have a color already laying there, it just takes a step away 
that's why I also like to put a lot of color on there and then you'll notice that you start getting an aesthetic for a certain type of palette which starts distinguishing your art uh, from others if you kind of look at Van Gogh he had you know he painted a certain way with certain colors so or you know see certain artists and you'll see that they tend to use certain uh, palettes and certain colors over and over it's just aesthetically pleasing to you and not everybody sees color the same way so remember that so anyway this is what we're gonna start and I'm just gonna show you how I quickly I sketched it and uh, I'm not gonna show you that part but I'm gonna show you the part where I just laid the colors and what I did is uh, I varnished or put a wash the main color so let me see his vest his military vest has a lot of green so I just did this green um, I see he's got like khaki or some beige a little bit of creamy color so that's why I did the um, burnt sienna same thing with the background it's the desert her gun so I put black uh, that's why I use the colors that I used in the background because it's the main color of whatever they're using. So they were using uh, blues. I would have done this just blue right away. If we were outside and the sky was blue, I would have just done a thin wash of blue. And if this was the dirt on the beach, I would have done a thin wash of uh, a little bit of yellow ochre with a little bit of blue mixed in there because it's picking up the colors from the sun and the water. So, you know, you use the main colors that are on there as just the basic wash. And you could either paint over it or allow that natural glow to come through when you're painting. Uh, and you'll see me as I'm going through. So now I've got two cameras and you cannot only see me as I'm laying the paint but you'll also see me as I'm mixing the paint on my palette so uh, tomorrow we're gonna get started on this there'll be more light and so the natural Sun would be coming through and you can see the colors better that's why I decided and we're gonna start on the face uh, she is gonna blend I don't want her her focus to be so much her because I don't want her competing with him so she's gonna gonna be light but her face, I want the expression of the face to come through so that I am going to focus on that. And of course, them. And then I'm going to have the, the fallen soldier boot with the gun and the helmet here diagonally. And she might have wings. I was wanting to do the wings to be like flag, the American flag in the background and indicating wings or giving you the... A suggestion of winks and you can read it however you want to but my I always ask my kids because they're also artists I'm like what do you guys think and my daughter was like now nah. so I might do a indigo background like the stars night her light coming through kind of like this <laughs> see here's a wash that I'm that I just did because I'm gonna do something else so this is the wash and this would be indigo and this is kind of be like her and uh, I'm also going to show you what I've been up to because not only do I paint that way but you guys know that I, I love angels if you follow me you know that I I like angels and very spiritual and so when I meditate I also have an angel channel where you can learn to connect with your angels when I meditate and I see my angels this is I painted what I see, so I wanted to paint the angel and the electricity coming through and you can see more angels very faintly in the background. So this kind of reminded me of like painting clouds and I wanted to show the energy coming through and how I've seen the angels. And um, here is another one when I was meditating and I go really deep within my heart and my soul and this is like a picture that I saw so um, I painted this I didn't know if you guys were interested in seeing me paint this this type of art and here's another one that I'm gonna give to somebody as a gift um, I'm not done and I kind of saw that there was a face coming through. So I went ahead and I to indicate the angel. She has a son that's always sick. So 
hoping to give her that when I'm done. This is just the steps that I'm doing as I'm going. So that's what I also do when I'm not showing you guys. I'm doing angel paintings. So I'm not sure if you guys were interested in that or not. Um, so anyway, we're going to get started and you're going to see me just add the wash, the basic background colors. So thank you guys for joining me and thank you to my subscribers. You guys mean the world to me and I'll let you see what I did. I sketched it with it turpentine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm putting some turpentine in there and it's been two days. So some of this might fade because the turpentine will lift it. So let me just show you what I do. What I'm going to get a thin brush. It could be a squirt brush. You get your brush. You get, so what I do is I get I have my burnt sienna and my linseed oil so the I mix the burnt sienna with the linseed oil and it gives me a um, like an ink the more linseed oil the more ink like and I can write and I can do things hopefully you can see this and you'll have to excuse my son he's really loud and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off. So you see how I'm doing the lines? So this is going to be an angel. You go ahead and you do what you need to do. And uh, the wings and uh, the more linseed oil there is, the easier the flow there is for your script brush to do the uh, sketching. Okay? So that's what I did. So now what I'm going to do, because it's been two days, I'm going to grab a napkin, have my linseed oil, not my linseed oil, but my turpentine, and I have my burnt sienna, and I'm going to put the colors in the background. The military soldiers, their uniforms, they have a little bit of what I call camel, olive drab, a little bit of brown. I wish my husband would have just kept one uniform, but he didn't. So I'm going to put a little bit of sap green. And then a little bit of I got my brush, just any brush. So here's a little bit of sap green and putting it on the uniform. We'll see you when I get the paints ready and then we'll go from there, okay? Thank you guys. Bye.